You know, you got to get comfortable. Got to make sure that my comfortness is staying put. I'm making it a word. <laughs> Anyways, hi everybody, Tiffany here. Welcome to my quilting life. Today is Sunday, so Sunday, where we sew something on a Sunday. <laughs> so hopefully you guys like what I'm, don't know what I'm sewing, because I don't really know what I'm making. I just grabbed some fabric and said, ah, I can use this. Ooh, okay. Anyways, <laughs> let's see who is all here. Let me grab some reading googlies, you know, because you need these to read these days. All right, we got Yolanda here, Judy, Polly, Geraldine, uh, Siberian Winds, that's a cool name. Uh, Teresa, Amanda, Linda, Juno, Tracy, Danelle, uh, Marilyn, Shirley, another Shirley, Mary, Kathy, Irish Sail Lady, uh, Beverly, Brenda, Catherine, Becca, Snarky Old Lady. Yes, snarky like Old name. Lady. I, I like love it. <laughs> Rose, Sharon, Joyce, Patch, Betty, Julie, uh, Sherry, Lori, G and B, Tracy, Andrea, and so very many more. You might have to scroll that the rest. I don't think it went all the way. So welcome everybody. And so what I have today is I've been cleaning in my fabric room and like pulling out, like I've separated one fourth yards, one third yard, one half yard, two third yard, and three quarter yards, and I made piles and anything that went together, I tried to keep it together, you know, like any fabric line. So I found all these pieces right here and it's art gallery fabrics, feel the difference. Okio text, we are something. Oh, season and spice. That's what it's called. I had another piece that had it. So here is just, a, um, uh, what is it called? A uh, quarter yard by half. So I don't know. I think they call these fat eighths. So here is one fat eighth. And this goes with it. So that would be two fat eighths. And then this one has jars on it. But it's the same fabric line. So that's three fat eighths. Here's some bees that makes four fat eights. I didn't even count, so that's why I'm doing it now. This is five fat eights. And then six fat eights. Seven fat eights. Eight fat eights. No, it's fine. Nine is a fat eight. This is ten of a fat eight. This is number eleven of a fat eight. And then there's some fat quarters from the same line. So that last fabric that I showed you. There's this. So if you cut this in half, you have a fat eight. But this is a fat quarter. So there's one. And then here's that orange print again. And a fat quarter. Two. And then the jars again in a fat quarter. Which are upside down. And then it's not the same fabric line, but the color matches and I needed something as like an accent to bring all this together. So I chose this. It's called Influ 
in in full bloom for RJR fabrics uh, made by quilters for the quilters. And I have, I don't even know how much is here. It is one full yard of this. And it might not even be one full yard because it has been cut. So it's like a half of a full yard. I don't know, but it's that big. So it's pretty much two, it's one full yard just already cut in half, if that makes any sense. <laughs> it was cut in half on the fold. Came out of the scraps that people sent me. So I chose that to go with all of this because I think it accents it nicely. And the feel of the fabric. I've forgotten the, um, uh, these AGF um, fabrics. These art gallery fabrics, the their Okio Tex standard 100, but they have a, they don't have that natural cotton feel. They have more of like a silky feel to them, and this fabric has that same silky feel to it, and it doesn't feel like that plain 100% cotton that we buy everywhere else at you know the quilt stores. It's definitely art gallery fabrics have this like silky texture to them. So there's that. So I have no idea what I'm making but I am going to come up with something and I am just going to make something out of all this and I'll tell you what I'm cutting when I cut it so I guess I'm going to go ahead and move this out of the way and then these guys I think I'm just going to go ahead and cut these also into eights honestly which will give me 10, 11, 12, 13 eighths. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. It'll give me 16 eighths. So this is what I pulled from my room to make who knows what, because I never know what I'm making here, <laughs> at least on Sundays. I come on a lot when when I don't have anything in mind. I just cut. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to trim cut these directly in half. Um, oh, and don't forget if you guys haven't already that you can enter the giveaway for my 50,000 subscriber giveaway. Uh, the entry form is either in the description of this video and or on the community tab on my page. So you go to my channel and then go to community and it's the first post on there. Or it's in, if you press more under this video, it's down in there. Um, it's just a Google form. Next Sunday, we will pull the 10 winners and it's all handmade gifts. So that's what it is. So don't forget to enter. It ends Saturday night. Yeah, ends Saturday night at midnight. For those who are watching the replay, this is on January 7th. Yeah, January. It only it, it'll be good January seventeenth through seventh through thirteenth, uh, twenty twenty four. For those that are watching the replay, just in case, I have to say that out loud because then they try to enter the giveaway years later. You know. All right. So now everything is an eight. And Becca posted a link. And Becca put a link in the chat. I forgot to make a command for that, but you know, you know, I just didn't think. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to stack these up in two piles, and I think I'm going to cut everything exactly the same. Honestly, can you turn the iron on so we can iron these flat? Ooh, please? Nice iron? Yeah, because they were folded in the drawer and they need to edge of those three. The rest of these seem to be nice and flat. Scotty's all happy. He's singing the I Get to Iron song. You know. Um, probably. I don't know. I don't know where they came from. They've been in there for a while <laughs> because they were buried in the bottom of a jaw. So when I started going through the yardage 
Yeah, the edge that's stuck up. See that fold? All right. So I'm just trying to stack these all up. And I'm going to cut them all at the same exact time. I'm new to regarding fabric. It's a salvage bed treasure by Cranston. Calvin, does that mean that fabric is 23 years old? Um, I don't know what that means on fabric. Um, sometimes there's a date, like older fabric that's before 2000. It might have a year on it, but anything after 2000, I have not really seen much fabric with a printed date on it. Some fabric lines do put the printed um, year on it. I've gotten a few that, you know, said 2021 or whatever on them. It could also be the year that the company came out, too. It could be anything. I'm not 100% on that because I don't design fabrics. So I really don't know how they do things in the fabric designing world when it comes well, to... These? No, they don't need to be pressed. Okay. These ones? No, I'm just going to work with them as they are. I'm just going to stack all this on here. Yes, it's crazy and wind, crazy windy, but no rain, no rain here. It, it kind of rained in the middle of the night. But that kind of word means probably for like five minutes. It rained this yeah, it rained this morning. That's why I said in the middle of the night. Oh, did it? Oh, it rained for two hours this morning? Well, I wasn't up for that. I slept right through it like a baby. <laughs> And I cut lots of layers at a time, so I don't even know how many I have in each pile, but I'm definitely going to just cut them all at the same exact time because I really don't care how many are in a pile. I think what I'm going to do is make... Um, these are nine inches, so I think I'm going to cut eight and a half inch. Oh, thank you. That's a purple color today. Well, it's going to last for like a month or more, but yes, it's purple right now. <laughs> oh, yeah. Out of country can enter the giveaway, but you're going to get a pattern in the mail instead of one of the homemade projects because I can't afford to send um, packages out of the country. I can send like a, a envelope out of the country, but yeah. We're going to line this up on a line and line this up on a line. And we're going to cut these up to eight and a half inch. Yes, I got the nail fixed and changed out my color and everything while I was at it. And trimmed them down because my nails were kind of like scary long. <laughs> and now that I'm long arm quilting again, I... Uh, have to have my nails nice because if not, I uh, tend to run over my fingernails with the long arm. <laughs> I don't mean to, it just happens. All right, so my ruler is eight and a half inches. So all I have to do is leave the ruler like this. This is my Quilter Select ruler. I just have to cut the width of the ruler. I'm literally just laying it Kind of center to these and cutting both sides. It's nice to have a good sharp blade for stuff like this so you don't have to push too hard. Yeah, it's only one entry per person. It'll be able to pick out multiples. So if you fill it out and your name is Frida Morgan, then you're going to. I'm going to see Frida Morgan more than once in there if you do it twice. Even if you change your email to something else, I'll know. It's just one entry per person. Makes it fair for the rest of everybody. All right. And then these are like 22 inches, right? Somewhere around there. Let's see. Fold that that way. Fold that that way. And go. Yes, under the community tab. One, two, three, four, five. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 
one ish inches. I'm going to cut all this into eight and a half by four and a half inch rectangles. That'll take me to 20 inches, leaving a little tiny bit of remainder. We're going to go four and a half inches by eight and a half inches. Remember, I'm just making something up as I go, and I'm not very good with the math part of things. So that's why I try to go with like familiar numbers. All right, so four and a half and a four. That's the half built onto the ruler. The soft monkey bag, I use um, Decoville Light and Pelon 911. Yes. All right, another four and a half. Another four and a half. And then that lined up. Another four and a half. And then the rest will just go in my what do I make with it later pile. Okay. Now I'm going to cut. my background fabric and just stack these up. I'll cut my accent or whatever I want to call it. I just cut, I don't even know, but oh, let's flat. I'm going to flatten this out real quick with the iron. Probably should have done that in advance. I didn't realize it was that wrinkly. How do you know what to cut when you don't know what you're making? How do I know what to cut when I don't know what I'm making? Well, I make it up as I go. So I just cut as I'm making it up in my mind. And I already think right before I even come over there that this accent fabric, I'm gonna cut into one and a half inch strips. And then we're gonna sub cut eight and a half and four and a half inch segments because I have pretty much one full yard here. So I should be able to um, get quite a bit to do everything. I think I'm just going to outline all of these blocks. Actually, yeah. Oh, look at how wonky that is. Wow. Yep. That's really wonky. Yep, that's because this was a scrap. I don't know what it came from or who it came from. Sometimes I know those things, but a lot of times I honestly don't remember. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to cut this nice and straight. Nice straight line to start. Make sure that I get both the same exact time. Make sure we got four layers. So two, three, four, more. And we're going to cut a couple one and a half inch strips. I'm going to cut, let's see, I should be able to do like just one, technically one yard. And then I'm going to sub cut those. Actually, no, let's cut a third. That way I'm getting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve strips. In, in reality, there's two, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six strips. And then I'm going to turn it and sub cut. Four and one half. Turn it, line it up on a line. I'm going to grab a smaller ruler for this. I don't even know how many are here. 
Scotty, count that, please. Yeah, how many are there? A lot. Two. I'm gonna count three. I think that will be fine. Momentarily, but we're going back to it in a second. And one more. So I cut one and a half by four and a half. And then. We're going to attach these to all the blocks on one side. I'm going to slide this over. Go ahead. Of the pile? No, just give me the pile. I'm just going to sew it, and if I need to cut more, I'll cut more. Oh, no, it's fine. Just give me the whole pile. I'm just going to sew them. Because I'm making it up anyway, so. All right. I'm just going to sew a one and a half by four and a half inch piece to my eight and a half by four and a half inch piece, one to each side for now. So I'm pretty much making like block, block things. I'm just going to line it up on here and sew with a quarter inch seam and chain piece all of them through. Yeah, this should be nice. And then I'm thinking when I lay them out that I'll stagger them and then we'll put um, these in between, more strips in between the rows. And this should make a pretty good size like toddler size quilt I'm assuming we'll see I'm not 100% sure and think because this uh, spice fabric is directional I might have to lay it in columns this way up and down instead of side to side And then we'll stagger them so some will cut directly in half. So this would be fun. Let's see what happens. I'm going to turn the jars directionally. And this isn't my normal liking of fabric colors. I, I normally don't make stuff with these colors, but other people like it, so I have to make stuff that other people like. I like brighter, more rainbow style fabrics. Just in case you wanted to know. Everybody has their own likings. I definitely like batiks. I like batiks. <laughs> That's a lot. start ironing them as I'm sewing them honestly yeah I can just snip them apart. you have your snips right yeah. press them towards that one I added the little piece These fabrics are kind of slippery on one side and not on the other. <laughs> because they have that silky finish. Yeah. 
What'd you say? No, they're cotton. That's just the way the fabric manufacturer makes it. So far, 90% of any art gallery fabric that I have ever used has always had that silky finish to it. Like the back side feels like regular cotton, the front side does not. All right. As soon as I get down to where I have like maybe 10, 11, maybe. I'm trying to think. Let's try 12. We'll try 12 rows. So when I have like 12 rows, I'm going to go ahead and um, kind of like lay them out on the design wall. Yeah. Because we are going to lose lots of seam allowances building it in a sideways direction. go all sideways. It's just that one. Oh, keep ironing and then take the slide down because then I'm going to start laying it out. There's another big pile for you. Yeah. Yeah. I I got the most excited when I hit uh, a thousand because it took during the whole period of me being on YouTube. YouTube used to allow uh, creators to do live streams before a thousand subscribers. So when I had less than five hundred, I was going on on live streams, and then during that period, I got to like I don't know. I was like it. 400 and something and YouTube sent me a message saying I can't go live anymore unless I'm from a computer. I didn't have a computer that I can go live from at all. So I couldn't go live and I had to make videos for a little while. So there's a gap in my YouTube, you know, world. So I had to wait until I was at a thousand subscribers to be able to do live streams again. So I was so frustrated and I was like telling the audience in every video that I made and uploaded, I said, please help me get to a thousand. I need to get to a thousand. It took like a year and a half to get to a thousand. Like seriously, it took forever. And when I finally did, I was super excited. So I was going live from my bedroom at the, was it my bedroom or I was still in the garage? But I had a tablet that acted as a laptop, so I was able to use that. But the picture quality was absolutely horrid, like super horrid. And yeah, I don't know. The mic's on. It should be working. Um, can, everyone hear her? can you all hear me? Only two people said it. So they might have to turn their volume up on their devices. So I waited and waited and waited. It got to a thousand. And when it did, I was like the most excited that I could ever be because I was like, yes, I could do live streams again. And I could actually talk with my audience and blah, 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 whenever I want from whatever device I wanted. So yeah, when I hit a thousand, I was super stoked. <laughs> And then 5,000 came, and then, you know, 10,000 came, and, you know, 15, 20, so on and so forth, and now 50. I 
definitely cannot believe it. I can't believe that all of you guys want to sit here and watch me. Although I sit and watch other people too. So, I mean, technically we all do the same exact thing. So I honestly appreciate all of you guys subscribing to my channel and coming around, watching my videos and commenting because this definitely took over my life, this YouTube thing. And it's 100% full time with you know making videos and commenting back to everybody that writes comments and everything that goes along with being here so uh no i am not sewing with double thread one of the thread spools is for winding bobbins on the go because <laughs> you can have both at the same time hooked up i've been on youtube since 2016 although it says 2000 something else but that's because i started uploading videos for my family to watch of the kids so but those videos you guys will never see because they're private so, how long have you been on quilting? tiffany's quilting life has been on since 2016 somewhere in 2016 i don't know exactly when it's like march of 2016 this year will be six years i think of youtube Thirty-seven. I don't know. Somebody might can go back and look for my first upload. Well, my first quilty related upload would be the wheelchair makeover, right? I think that's my first quilty upload. Hmm? This is a Juki TL 2010Q that I am using. I absolutely love this machine. I love it so much I own two. And Scotty put a link in the um, in the chat for you guys if you're interested. All right, I need to cut at least two. I need to cut another strip. I'm gonna cut two more strips. Oh no, those are not the size. Those aren't the length, but they're by four and a half. It's one and a half by four and a half. So I'm going to cut technically two strips. Line that back up, cut all the selvages off at the same exact time. And cut some. I only need to cut two, four and a half. One and two. That should be plenty. So I said I wanted to keep like 12 aside. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I'm going to do 13 aside just to be on the safe side. Because there's, they're longer than they are um, wide. Um, how often do I oil my machine is the question. I oil my machine often. Okay, so there's lots of debate on Juki Junkies saying that you need to oil only once every couple months. Then there's other websites that say you need to oil after every single project or right before every single project. Then there's some, the book and all sorts of things, oiling it every time you change the needle, oiling it every time you do this, oiling it every time. I oil my machine like three times a week, but I also sew so much more than everyone else. And I have taken my machine apart and showed you guys in a video. My, uh, one has a little, uh, what is that word called? There's a word for it. Two of these top ones have a tray and one bottom one has a tray. And the other two top ones and one bottom one have a wick. That's the word I was looking for. They have a wick. And my wicks, if your wick is turning black, then you're oiling it way too much. My wicks are always clear, halfway dry. And so, yeah, I'm not over oiling my machine at all. But I oil it three times a week ish because I sew a lot 
I mean, I was literally just sewing for an hour and a half before coming on live stream, you know? So, I mean, I sew quite often. And then, obviously, I'll be sewing for now two hours for this, you know? So, I definitely oil my machine a lot. And it's never had a problem. I don't drip any excess oil or anything. I don't have a mess in the tray of my machine, you know, the bed part that's underneath the whole machine, because this is a mechanical machine. That whole bed area, it's not even full. There's barely any oil drips ever in there, and it takes like six months for that to happen. Huh? Uh, no, I started with a old brother machine that was from 1982 and it had the dials on the side and roll buttons here there and oh my god it was just uh and it went chug good chug good chug good chug on full speed like that thing was the slowest machine after that i got a kenmore i picked up from a yard sale or a thrift store i don't remember where i got it and then after that Scott bought me because I started oops because I started sewing more he bought me a uh, a brother uh PQ 1500 PRW the project runway one from Walmart and then that one um seized up pretty quickly I'm, you're not done here's more um, it seized up pretty quick, so then uh, I bought another used brother machine, and that one uh, just did not work. It was clinky clanky. Then finally, Scott says, "Okay, let's go get you a brother SQ nine two eight five from Walmart." And I had two of those because the first one uh, we got it from Walmart. They shipped it to us, and it didn't work right. So we actually just took it back to Walmart, and by then they had them in stock. So we just got one from the back and. It worked. I think they would just, you know, you never know with the cheap ones that you can buy Walmart, Target, or wherever you can buy a sewing machine. Those ones are a little bit lesser quality than buying from an actual machine shop or store that spe specializes in selling machines. So, like Sewing Machines Plus, that, you know, they have every single kind of machine possible. And so that's when I finally got the Juki, but I got it originally on a frame because I was free motion quilting and I hated it absolutely just was annoyed with it so I decided to I wanted a frame and I wanted the long arm quilt so the Juki was a mid arm on a frame and that's how I worked for a while was that way <laughs> all right we're gonna lay these out and we're also going to start with we're going to take the first one and it's going to be what's half of um, eight and a half is four and a quarter, right? Okay, so we're going to cut a four and a quarter by four and a half inch piece and it's going to go right here. And then we're going to take these pieces and we're going to run it down one right after the other. Oh, that looks this way tell the difference in size. I have to make sure it's the correct direction. I have no idea how long this is going to be. I don't do math very well <laughs> at all. All right. And then we're going to just keep going with these, one right after the other, putting the fabric that I added to the top part. This one. And this one. Move the chair out of the way. Then we're going to start another one that's whole right here. And they're going to like taper differently because I cut it. I should have cut it exactly four and a half, but that's okay. So these ones will start with a whole piece. Mix these up. Start the next row because I don't know how far down I'm going. Let's cut another one of these at four and a quarter. Start another row. This one. And this one. And 
actually going to put strips down the center of it, I think, if we have enough yardage. They're not exactly center, you know. Come on with these other colors. All right, so the next row is going to start with the whole piece with the separator. And like I said, these are going to go in between like that, I think. I'm pretty sure we have enough strips for that. So we'll see. But for now, I'm just laying it like this. Oops. Let's grab. No, I'm not even in an order. I'm just laying them here. There's got to be some in here that I haven't used yet. There we go. That layer. Um, Emma? Oh. You guys want we can do an auction tonight too. Oh, here's a yellow one. I haven't had one of these in a bit. Come on. So one, two, three, four. Then the next one will start with a half. Let's start with a half of one of these. What did you say? All right. So we're going to start it like that. Here. There. Don't you guys just love how I just talk to myself? Here, there, there, that, this. <laughs> Here. So I don't know how far I'm going down yet because I don't know how many pieces I have. I mean, I know how many pieces, sort of. I have a random amount. That's how many we have. A random amount, yeah. <laughs> I, I already did that. Let's do canned goods. Actually, they're, they're jars of this. It says citrus rosemary, uh, sweet fig jam. So they all say weird stuff. Yeah, that's within a... Um, quarter inch of the uh, salvage. I mean, there's, he was asking if the salvage was, uh, you know, because it was in that piece that he just showed me. So it's within the quarter inch seam, so I never worry about that. If it wasn't seam, then I would worry about it. But it's not within the seam, so I'm not worried. Oops. Things you can do with fabric. All right, so I'm going to go down this way. Yeah. This way. There. And this one here. So I don't know how far I'm going. Oh, I think that's two of the same thing in a row. No, 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 no. Let's grab this thing right here. Like that. <clears throat> I don't know how big this is going to be. <laughs> I'm just playing the guessing game now. I can swap these. Here. 
need to go wider. So we need to you gonna put sashing between the columns? take one. Yes, sashing is going to go between the columns. So I'm going to put this one here. And then another row. Oh, let's do the same thing. Don't do that one. This one there. Unwrap jars. Okay, so I have one, two, three. So we're going to cut off the remainder, I think. Or I can just, um, I forgot already. The fabric is called, it's Art Gallery Fabrics. It is, let me find a salvage that has it. Art Gallery Fabrics, something in spice. Uh, season and spice. Season and spice, Art Gallery Fabrics. Oh, oh here's more. Thank you, Scotty. Didn't even see that. So we're going to put this guy here. That way I can go one more row. Oh, yeah, you can tip it up. Yeah. I didn't realize how high I was going, honestly. <laughs> Let's do this one for a second. Lots of jars left. I'm just going to go there. And then we're going to have this guy here and we're going to cut off the remainder, is what we're going to do. Like this. Oh, that matches that. Can't do that. That matches that. Can't do that. We'll swap one out is what we'll do. Let's swap this one for this one. There we go. Put that guy on this one. And then this one. Jars here. And then this one. Oh, nope, that's the same as that one. No, no, no. No, no, no. All right, let's move it around. Let's find where I can put this where it's not next to that. No, nope, because that will be next to that. I don't know. I'm a thinking. All right, he's going to go here. He's and go there, and then we're going to cut some half ones. We're going to go here. So we're going to sew on one piece to that one, one piece to that one. We don't want jars. We'll do this guy right here. Let's just do some bees. Four and a quarter. That's going to get on there. So I need one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. Let's do this one. Four. And we need a fifth one. We'll do this one right here. Five. I have one of those, so I only need to cut four 
four and a half inch strips off of here. And it's stacked up in four, so that's perfect. All right, I'm gonna sew these on and we're gonna hook these down here in those empty gaps. And then we're gonna cut one and a half inch strips from the rest of everything. And we're gonna have to attach them because they weren't a full yard. So I'm gonna have to attach them together in continuous rows and then we'll just build from that, honestly. these down there and we'll start making the rows and putting the rows. We press these back real quick so that I can add these to the bottom and then go from there. I'll start cutting all that other stuff up. I could make one more row honestly. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. We're making one more row. So here's four. And we're gonna go to my scraps because I saw, I saw one or two that were like, this is five. And I'm gonna go over here because this might be four and a half right here. And this makes six. All right, we're gonna get one more row. Why? Because we can. That was about using them earlier. You said they weren't the right size. Oops, that is not the right size. Now they are. Oh, that is not four and a half. Is that four and a half? No, it's not. That goes in the wrong size. That goes in the wrong size pile. How did that happen? That's the right size. That's because some of the pieces were shorter. Because of the mess up in the yardage. Send these to Scott to iron, and then we're going to put our bottoms on. And then all I have to do is attach one more bottom to one more. Yeah. Yeah. I need to find another one that's four and a half for one bottom piece. Because this one will be. All right. Let's put these down here now. This one's gonna go here. Put this one on there. And put this orange one here. Put the, these there. And we'll put this there. Ta-da! Now we just need to make our final row, which is gonna start with one of these four and a quarter inch pieces. This. These up here. Are they five inch strips? No, they're not five inch. They're um uh uh four and a half by eight and a half. I don't want that one to touch. And then this actually can get ripped off. Oh, let's just cut the four and a quarter off of here because that's already the right size. But I don't want that one there. He's there. And this one here. Ta da! <laughs> 
All right, now to hook all the rows together. Goes in my scrap pile. We're gonna cut some one and a half inch strips off of here. I'm just gonna cut this whole entire thing into one and a half inch strips and then I'm gonna sew all those together. And then hopefully, I'm hoping that there's enough. I need one, two, three. I'm gonna quick. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm going to measure this real quick. Because we need 20 in total. Because I need two per, because these are half strips. 22 and 22 is 44, plus I'm going to lose a little bit. Let's see how long those are. I'm not going to cut yet. We're going to see how long these turn out, because I don't think there's going to be enough. And if there's not enough, we'll just go down to one inch which is fine between them all because it still gives that dash look, you know? So I'm just gonna pick them all up, one on top of the other, and sew them together end to end. Okay, so this one, the top, and this one goes to it. That'd be good good if it was the correct direction. That one was cut sideways. Oh well. Okay, and I'm going to put this one on it and so on and so forth until they're all together. So we're connecting them in, in uh, vertical columns instead of horizontal rows, which we normally would do. So I'm going to put this last piece on here, and then I'm going to give it to Scott to press, pull the next down, and then just do one right after the other. I don't even know why I bother with that. I'm just going to thread it the regular way that I thread things. All right, here's for you to press. Just press them all away from. I don't care. It doesn't really matter because they're not getting nested to anything. Oh, press in towards whatever. All right, next, I'm going to grab the top, just stack them on top of each other towards the big one. Okay, this was my top piece. The second piece is going to hook to that, and so on and so forth. It's so much fun just coming up with something and just sewing it. Who needs the math, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's fine. Perfect. Same with the throw. Is on here. Huh? Yeah. I don't remember if that was the way or not. I think I got this white one, so it goes this way. Yeah, it goes this way. All right. 
next. Um, stack it. Stack it. Stack it. So we're going to leave them separated just so that we get an idea um, for the sashing part. Yeah, over and over. <laughs> Man, you know. <laughs> one more. This can get pressed and we'll pull the next one down. that for Scotty and then we'll grab this down. Okay. Seems like my phone is going off like crazy. Doesn't go that way. Goes this way. Get it right. Yeah, I've got to get it right. All right. That way, no two are next to each other. I don't want the same colors next to each other. You know. All right. Stack the next row. And so. goes on the wall.
See, you know, when you don't like something, you don't like the fabric or whatever, but then you put together the quilt. Sometimes it takes piecing the quilt to realize you actually like it because it's looking good. Uh, no, I don't think about how I'll quilt it while I'm piecing it. I mean, some t it depends on the quilt, honestly. But most times, no, I don't think about that. When it actually comes to the quilting part, I usually lay the quilt somewhere in full so that I can see it, unless it's a king size quilt. Then I don't have the room to lay it anywhere. But I'll lay it somewhere and I'll just give myself like a general idea um, in my head. I'll just start thinking in my head, oh, hey, yeah, I like this idea or, you know, I like that idea or whatever. I change my mind a lot too when it comes to quilting. That's why I don't think about it at this point because I change my mind. By the time I get to the long arm, sometimes I don't even quilt. I no idea. And that's probably why I have so many quilts hanging in my closet because I can't think of what to do on them. I have some that are hanging there that I should have finished a long time ago because they were for a video series and it's already 2024, you know, you would think that I would have these things done, but yeah, but you know, when I make a quilt for a video, 90% of the time you see a finished quilt in the end of that video. So I just need to do that more often, you know, make a video <laughs> that way the quilt gets finished. <laughs> because it's for a video, so it's top priority. <laughs> that's for you, that's for me. I just realized that spacing is a part. I'm like running out of room this way. <laughs> Gonna have to slide all this over just a little. There's room because by the time I get to those last four rows, there's not going to be any room. So I have them spaced so that I can add sashing. Okay. Take that thing. Six. Any other kind of questions that I can answer while I'm sewing? I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm uh, super quiet. I didn't even take off fast. I took off very slowly and the thread broke. Oh, if we lose connection, guys, the internet is kind of uh, being a little wonky. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It is, uh, it's like 30 mile an hour wind gusts out there. It's pretty bad. That's just like average wind for here. <laughs> no, I have not quilted Scullover. I don't know what I'm doing on Scullover and I need to get Scullover done. I'm just, you know, I'm like, you know, just haven't done it yet. I need to get the thread. I just still haven't even bought the thread. I told you guys all about it. I wanted variegated thread. I still haven't even bought it. I haven't found the right one that speaks to me. The local quilt shop hasn't even ordered it yet. Yeah, the local quilt shop hasn't even ordered the color that I wanted. <clears throat> it's not really their fault. They have to order a new box that has 
Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep, if you don't like it, cut it into smaller pieces. Definitely a thing. That's why I have so many scrap bins. Because <laughs> I find a lot of fabric ugly. But I still use it. That's the funny thing. I use all fabric. No matter if it's my style or not, it's crazy. I'm just all over the place, you know. But it's not because it's my preference. Honestly, it's because... Not only do I make quilts for my family and friends, but I also make quilts to sell. So if I don't have like other options to choose from, then all of my family and all of my friends and all of my for sale quilts are only going to be things I like. And that just, that's not how you, you run a business, honestly. So I have to make things that others will like. So I go out of my comfort zone to work with things that I don't like. And originally I didn't like this, but it's really starting to look cute. I like the way the colors are just, you know, going through the whole thing and blah, blah, blah. It's looking good. So I had to change a bobbin. I heard it making that funny sound in there, you know. So it was definitely time to put a bobbin in. Next. I don't know how to do skull shapes free motion. That would really take a lot of effort on my part to learn how to do it, so I won't. It's just going to be custom quilted of some sort. So I just don't want to do what everyone else does with those legit kits and so straight lines and all the sections, you know, in different ways. I wanted to do mine differently. I definitely gotta stop cutting thread with the machine. Again. Mm -hmm. Am I gonna what? Yes, as soon as I finish Skulliver, he will be in my show quilt. Or she. It could have been a she. Why does it keep doing that? Every time I try to, like, rush to get something done, I have thread breaks. But when I am just doing my own thing, no camera running, I have no problems. <laughs> I'm serious. This is like crazy. Just making sure I have a long thread tail. I don't like having all these extra threads hanging off of here, but whatever, because I'm going to have to have a long thread tail no matter what I do. One more row to sew, and then we are going to figure out this whole sashing in between thing because I definitely want one and a half inch, preferably. But if we can't get that many strips, then I'm gonna have to go with a one inch. Which is okay. It, it won't be too far off. Oh. 
My foot pedal has made its way all the way to the back of the desk. <laughs> Gotta hunt that thing down constantly. Can I show what? Oh, you just stick it in upside down. It's not a fish. It's a a, a bird, a hummingbird, a crane or a hummingbird. It's a hummingbird. I'm pretty sure of it. And then it just goes in upside down so that the the hook is on the bottom of it because it goes through the needle with the hook. There's a little hook right here on the bottom of it. If you put it in right side up like this, your hook's going to be on the top and it's going to be hard to hook your thread to it. So if you put it on the bottom, the thread actually gets stuck to it. You can see it gets stuck to my finger even and grabs it and goes where it's supposed to. You should have warned me. I could have warned them that the camera was moving. <laughs> Right, two more little pieces to sew on here, and then we're gonna figure out this. Because I didn't, you know, I didn't think of the yardage before because I didn't know what I was gonna make. So that's why I don't have like exact numbers for you guys. All right, here's your last one to press. Put this up here, and then we're going to measure how long these are actually we'll just use this one as an example real quick in my I'm gonna lay it on here I'm gonna fold it in half so that i can see how much how long it is it is what's 27 and 27 uh, 24 54 yeah, I definitely don't have 27 inches on that, so I need 54 inches. Uh, oops. Okay, so that means, let's see how much yardage I have. I really want one and a half, but if we don't have enough. Okay, let me open this up. So it's two and a piece. Um, are you done ironing for a bit? Yeah. For a minute, yes. Sorry, guys. I'm not really good with math, so I'm determining what I'm going to get here. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. That's not even sixteen because it's not straight. So it's 15 strips. I need 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. But yep, that's not enough. So one inch is the number we're going to go with. And we're just going to make one long thing and put them in between there. But let's make sure we have enough for one inches as well. It's 20. We're going to say 23 length strips so that's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty twenty one twenty two twenty three yep we have enough for one inch strips so we're gonna do one inch strips because i can't do it the other way i'm trying to clean the needle hole goes from front to back because the one on the juke go from the side to yeah, the Juki is a side-to-side -side needle, not front-to-back. It is a side-to-side -side thing. All right, so I'm going to cut one-inch strips. Got to straighten this back up. And I'm just going to sew all these together end, 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 and then. Well, I need to, I need to put something in between there. So we're going to go ahead and just go with one inch strips. I think it'll look cool. Um, I didn't think of that, no. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Nine, twelve. 
I should have enough to go across the top and bottom. Yeah. We're just going to hook these all end to end and then see what happens. Um, I could add, uh, introduce another color, but I've already started cutting these, so. Come on. Where do I put your ruler? We're going to see right now, because it might look dumb, it might not look dumb. I don't know. Never know until you put it together. What are you gonna put in? Yeah. I'm hoping there's gonna be enough to go across it. So I'm just cutting it all up and hook them all together. And then just sew each thing out to the strips. I'm just cutting one inch strips. I'm literally cutting one. Sure, about a time. Yeah, I know. It takes a long time to do it. But... It'll look good. It'll look good. When have I ever failed, you guys, on an ugly quilt? <laughs> One more. Oh, no, 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 don't move. There we go. Stay, stay. Don't move. <laughs> One more. There we go. Okay. Now, i cut the selvages off all at the same time, and then I need to, I'm not even going to bother straightening the ends, because I'm just going to hook them all together. If it's not straight, it's not straight, whatever. Try not to wiggle or move, and then the pieces won't move. <laughs> All right. This should be plenty to go all the way around, and then I can grab a, another fabric for a border. I don't know what I have in my room my fabric room that's similar to this. Um, well, this will be a top. Just having fun with it. Put all those off at the same time. Let's see if I can do this without moving anything. Let's just lay it sideways, right there, all the way across. Nice and straight. Ta da! <laughs> <laughs> Ta -da! I mean, sometimes, you know? All right, we're just gonna. So, so it all. Over there, under that. We're going to have a auction real quick. They're on, under, nope, nope, over there. That way over there. Okay. I go ahead now and just hook all these end, 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 end until there's one super duper looper long, long, long piece. If I can line them up, I'll just grab an end. Move it over here. I need to straighten that out because it's kind of crooked. 
they're over here. Over here, right there. Over there, over everywhere. All right, so these are going to start off at five dollars. And just remember if you win the bid, to email me as soon as possible with how you want to pay, which is either uh, Zelle or PayPal or uh, Venmo, or that's what I have, those three things. <laughs> Four of them. And this is for four of them. All four go together. It is a set of placemats. I made these on what day? Thursday. Thursday. Breakfast for my breakfast at Tiffany's. And I showed you guys how to make them. <laughs> now they are available to one of you. It's going to take me a minute to get all these little ones because one inches are a little bit more fiddly than any other size to, you know, get lined up. But it's working and I got it going. Just got to keep with it. We're at $25 on burn. <laughs> There's going to be one really long, long piece. <laughs> it would be so much easier if I didn't have to, if I didn't have only half the yard because it was already cut in half, you know. Because it was somebody's scraps. But you make the scraps work with what you got. Sew it up. That one has to be cut because that one has to be cut. And it's another one on. Wait, this is hard work. We're at 40. Hannah's at 40. At least what we see on our screen, <laughs> which should be as caught up as possible. We're at 45, Bernie. I'm using the scissors because the ends were jaggedy, and I kind of just cut these all up and I'm just sewing them all up. So. God, he's gonna show so he's gonna show a close-up. That's what it looks like. It's pine cones and leaves. And then it, the quilting is pretty basic, stitch in a ditch. And the back is pretty basic it's just polka dots and I did not put tags on them because they are um, table mats place mats whatever you want to call it so if you win them if you want me to sign them I will but it's just a regular pen signature on the back with a fabric marker we're at 45 Bernie going once Bernie at 45 going twice Bernie, you are the winner at $45. Don't forget to email me. I'm pretty sure you know my new email now is Tiffany, Tiffany's Quilting Life, all one word at yahoo.com. I put it in there. Because I'm still getting lots of emails in my old one that are Bernie, fresh. If so. you're related to our neighbor Leroy Chamberlain, let us know. <laughs> <laughs> Bernie's last name is Chamberlain. Yeah. Which... <laughs> Our neighbor's last name is Chamberlain, spelled exactly the same way. 
He has lots of family all over the states. Um, uh, no, because I haven't even taken pictures or anything yet. Well, I guess I can do that later. So, yeah, sure. If you want to do it, let's do it. You guys want to do another auction? You guys want to do another auction? We can put another one up. Is that a yes? No? Maybe no so? Maybe we can do it another day. Try not to overwhelm you guys with auctions on here. Yeah, they want to see what I made. For sure. I got like 15 more to sew on. And then uh, snip apart this very long strip. I'm not even going to press the seams. What I'm going to do is just sew them directly and, and then cut as I go. And the seam will just go down anyway. So it'll be quite simple to attach all these rows together with my little one inch strips. No, it, I'm just going to start attaching them. Make it easier. Yeah, Scott's ready and rearing at that iron. He's like, oh, let's go. Time to iron. <laughs> but that's okay. I'm just going to snip them apart and start sewing them on. Okay. Just not very many left to go. Come on. I can do it. I got it. Let's keep going. Is that my best bud? Oh. Hi, Justin. What is it? Did you buy and forget again? <laughs> My friend Justin is here. You guys. Oh my goodness. I feel like I've been sewing these on forever now. Probably didn't even need this many. This is probably overkill, but you never know. <laughs> now, no matter what kind of fabric it is, even if it's this silky stuff, it's still very dusty. It's also the thread. The thread is very dusty too. Driving my allergies nuts. Actually, it's like the nose hairs. It's driving the nose hairs nuts. Bring it in. Scotty's not in the chat right now, by the way. He's out. Being Justin. And last. Nope. Is that last one? Nope. Yep. This is the last one. This is the last one. All right. Now I'm going to. I am using Essentials Thread from Connecting Threads. It is a 50 weight. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Even though someone just asked me and I figured I, I needed to look. So let's see really quickly. It is 50 weight. Yeah, so it is a 50 weight thread. Yeah, I either use 40 or 50 weight thread for piecing every time. You want to come on camera and say hi? No.
it is festive. I didn't like the fabrics at first, but once they're put together into something, it changed my mind. Come on. <laughs> yeah. All right. Now, so these on. All right. Here we go. Like I said, I'm not even going to press. I'm just going to go for it and sew all the way down. And these are going to go in between each row. And then I'll snip it to the size it needs to be when I get to the end. And then whatever's left over, we're hoping we can go up on the top and the bottom. Huh? Oh, okay. Yeah, let's do it. All right. We're going to have another auction and it's going to start out at uh, $10. It is a wall hanging that I did, and it's custom quilted with super custom quilting. I didn't know how to make a snowflake because I am not computerized. Um, so I made a feather snowflakes in the center and on the sides. And it's not flat because it's been folded and put in a pile for a while. Oh, I don't know how big it is either. either. Scotty's going to have to go on it and look. And he'll show you the back. It's a, a, it's a uh, Christmas uh, snowflakes print. It's 32 by 32. All right, so this one is now on here and I'm just going to go ahead and finger press it towards the yeah, that sashing. It's free shipping within the US. Anything outside the US, we will ask you if you could at least pay the shipping. I am using a 9014 needle. He's gonna bring it up close for us to see. From the back side, you can see it really well because the light. Okay, so now I'm going to take this strip and grab the next one off the wall. Right sides together with it, and I'm going to stitch this one on. Is that a quarter inch seam allowance? Yeah, I decided to do custom quilting on that. It was. Um, it was hard to choose a design, so I was like, I just want to go with snowflakes because the fabric has snowflakes. So. And the, the corners, the, the feathers in the corners are the tiniest feathers I have ever quilted. And I actually did pretty good. <laughs> I'm very surprised at how they came out. So a lot of work went into that little quilt. We're at 50. All right, so these rows are together. It's going to hang over about half an inch because we had a half an inch of difference when I cut the pieces in half because I didn't measure the seam allowances within. So when the next strip is lined up, it's a half an inch bigger. I'm just going to leave it folded in half. I'm actually just going to manually chop that off and every row we attach, will every other row to size. Just like that. So now we're going to do another sashing strip. I'm just going to open this up, come to the top again. I'm just going to finger press that towards the sashing. We're at 55. 55 is what it's at. This is why I don't like leaving long thread tails because they come out of the seams. Not yet. I'm just giving it a little finger press. Well, it's an accident. Oh, 
my, yeah. <laughs> Justin just noticed that my fingernails match the colors on here. Because it's it like is, a yeah. plum purple, and these are like a plum, uh, like a magenta almost, but purple. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, didn't even know. I never met. Well, it happens often, actually, that my fingernails match my projects. I had red ones when I did this. So. Yeah, I felt enough. Yes, definitely. So it's surprising when it matches. <laughs> and I don't even think about it. So I'm just putting a sash in strip now. And then we'll grab another row and put it on the opposite side. And then we're going to pass it to Scott to press. So we don't want to get too big without pressing some of this. What'd you say? 75. That's at 75. I'm ending with a seam at the end, but I really don't care. I don't like when that happens, but it happens. And I, well, I'm just going to leave it because once it's quilted, nobody's even going to know or care. Okay, so I'm going to add one more strip to this and then. We're going to send this to Scott for some iron. Yep. And then we'll just continue back and forth doing these sashing strips in between every single one of these rows. And hopefully there's enough to go on the top and bottom and the two sides to finish it off. And then hopefully I can find a fabric that goes with all this to add for a bigger border around it to make it a little bit bigger. Did you see I hit 50,000? Yeah. This one's exactly the right size. All right, you press all this, and I'm going to add to. Okay, let's uh, 76. I mean 75 going. 75 going once. Oh, 75 going twice. And so for 75 to who? Don F. Don F. Please email us at Tiffany's Quilting Life at yahoo.com and. Um, Stop a link in, and then uh, as soon as you let us know, PayPal, Zelle, or uh, what's the other one again? I forgot already. Venmo. Venmo. Let me know. And <laughs> oh, there was one that came in late. Whatever comes in on the screen is what we go by. Yeah. If it doesn't see it by the time I say the word, if it's not on the screen. <laughs> well, it's that's what auctioneers do, don't they? I don't know how it works. There's always there's always auctions every couple of Sundays. Whatever way they want to go, just push it. As long as it's flat. Huh? I think it'll look fine once it's all together. All right, so I'm just going to make this one the same size. I'm going to go ahead and finger press and then add another row to it, and then we'll attach those first four with a sashing between the next four that I build. That way I'm not getting it too wide or too wonky because we are using one inch strips and they're really long. So we definitely don't want to get anything off of, we don't want anything off kilter. 
you know, definitely watching for that. You can put sleeves on wall hangings, yes. I usually put hanging hooks on my own, but when I um, make them to sell them or auction them or whatever, I don't put any um, anything on them because it's up to the person. I don't know how you're going to hang it once you get it to your house. So uh, that's, you know, I mean, for family, sometimes they'll say, oh, I don't want anything on it. I'm pinning it to the wall, you know, and then I have other family members that say, put ribbon on it so that I can run it through a rod like I do or can you put a solid sleeve on because I'm putting it on a curtain rod and you know so it, it, it's always different and so that's why I don't add any to my for sale ones because honestly I don't know what you're doing on with it so that's users whatever <laughs> purchasers owners whatever choice that's the word I'm looking for looks cool with the thin and being thick in between yeah, once honestly there, once it's together it looks good. fine yeah weird when let me put the, another big piece on yeah. this one and then i will get off of here and we'll finish this next sunday because it's almost time and i have company that i don't get to see very often and i would like to spend a few minutes with him before he leaves to go spend time with the kids Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, Justin has a quilt uh, I made for him for, I think it was his birthday or something. I don't know, it was a long time ago. And it's the Barzillo one, right? The one that's in your semi-truck? Yeah, so he's washed it like 50 more times. And the color is still super strong and vibrant like it was the day I made it. He makes sure to tell me, because he's a trucker, so obviously... Truckers get a little dirty when they go out and check their tires. He goes through all sorts of different weathers and stuff. And so his comforter, his comforter, his quilt can get dirty out in the semi-truck. It's actually the only quilt that I've ever made that travels the United States. It, it doesn't go into Maine and never been into Alaska. And it's never gone to Hawaii. So the rest of the states, though, you've been in the rest of every single one of them, right? Since then, that's been like eight, seven years, eight years, right? Yeah, that's more than 50 times. Because I made that for you when I was still a beginner. So it's been many, many, my phone is ringing. Just decline whoever it is. Oh, it sounded like it. Oh. All right, so I'm almost done, and then we're going to have Scott press it. I'll put it up on the wall so that you guys can see. I don't know 
know why, but this one seems to be hanging over more than the rest. Here, press this and we'll fix that because I don't, I think something. What are we fixing? That one. Oh. One of them is hanging longer than the rest, and I'm pretty sure I put them all at the same height, but we'll see right now if you cut it. Alrighty. Let's see. Questions or anything? Can you pass? I'll just use the computer while you press. All right. Any questions or anything that anybody has before I get off of here, before Scott's done pressing? So the giveaway is in, we're just going to bring this to the screen because I'm going to show you guys screen on screen. Hopefully that works. So if you look under a video, and this is also that with, um, come on, side no, screen. Hold on. I got to go scroll it down on the page i can't do that and hold it at the same time so under a video even on cell phones it's got a more button right here you guys see that more button if you hit that more button where's the mouse you can't see it you click on that more button and it opens up a whole entire thing and i'm not going to scroll through that but you can see that first thing says google docs you click on that and it will actually take you to a google doc obviously this is through my own thing and i wanted to make sure it works so it says i already responded but then it'll be a form and that's how you enter and you just fill out the questions they are all questions that you have to answer and then you just x that out and go back to the video so that's how it works in a cell phone or you know, the other place it's on is the actual youtube page all right so this gonna go here and then obviously yeah and it starts making a giant disaster and then this will be in between like that and then we're just going to continue doing that with the rest of all of this but we're going to continue that next week on sunday and then we'll get this one finished and it gives me time before between now and next sunday it'll give me time to find a, a, a fabric in my stash that matches i know it's not going to be the same brand because obviously the sashing is not the same brand but i'll find something in my stash that will match after this goes around the edge then i'll put like a five inch border all the way around it or something to make it a lot bigger than it currently is so all right, so if there's no questions, I'm going to go ahead and get off here and spend some time with Justin. And don't forget to subscribe if you're new because I hit 50K and it's like way over that now. And don't forget thumbs up on the video. And I'll, I'll be here whenever I'm here. So I'll see you guys either next week or sometime during the week. Bye, everybody.